Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to talk a little bit about these red spots that you see everywhere which represent the dark matter. Today I'm going to show you a visual representation of why we think dark matter exists and hopefully you'll understand a little bit more about it. And if you still haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button right now because there's so many more educational videos coming in the future. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now we've actually talked about dark matter previously quite uh, quite a few times, uh, but uh, I think I still get quite a lot of questions from you guys about so what exactly is it, or basically you know how do we actually know that it's there? Why do we think that it's there? Um, in the last few years, there were actually quite a lot of really expensive experiments trying to discover dark matter. One of the more recent ones um, in summer of 2016 basically um, inserted a very very large tank with quite a lot of um, xenon, which is a very interesting non-reactive gas that was supposed to detect uh, dark matter. It was supposed to catch the dark matter particles passing through it and would hopefully explain a little bit about dark matter. Let's actually um, go into the simulation right here and let's delete all of the dark matter so you see what happens to these galaxies if there is no dark matter in them. Now the problem with all of these experiments up to date is that they found absolutely nothing. Not even a single trace of dark matter. There's basically zero experimental data, which is obviously disappointing but also surprising and at the same time unusual because if there is dark, no dark matter in our galaxy, this is what would happen to our galaxy. It would basically kind of fly apart into little pieces. But let's actually just do this a little bit more simply. Let's do this very, very, very uh, simply using nothing but... Um, let's actually place the Sagittarius A black hole right here in the middle and then go to a distance where uh, the sun should be and place the sun out there. Now, uh, having observed uh, the motion of the sun around our galaxy, um, scientists have determined that um, it usually or approximately moves at a speed of about 200-ish um, kilometers per second around the Sagittarius A. And it takes it approximately 200 million years to move around Sagittarius A once, and this is something we refer to as the galactic year. The distance to Sagittarius A from our sun is approximately 26,000 light years, which is where I'm going to place it right now. And so here is our sun orbiting or moving around, I guess orbiting is not really the right term here, moving around Sagittarius A, um, and basically it will be in a very kind of a circular fashion. Now this is a super simplified model, it's obviously not a represent representative of our galaxy, but that's just an idea for you to kind of try yourself um, if you do have this game as well. If you go into motion here and you look under the speed, you'll see that the total velocity is 1.5 kilometers per second. It's not even close to being 200. All right, well, obviously that's because this is not a galaxy, this is not a rep representative of a galaxy, that's just a... Um, a black hole in the middle. So maybe if we kind of increase its mass to represent all of these other stars that are in, in the galactic center, if we increase its mass, uh, making it more massive, maybe then this will be a little bit more accurate. So let's actually go into basics here and increase its mass from 4.3 million suns to, I don't know, just say a billion. Let's make it a billion suns um, massive. Now the sun will instantly start uh, getting sort of sucked into it and we might have to actually change the parameters here just so that it doesn't actually get destroyed. We're going to change eccentricity and change the distance to 26 light, uh, 26,000 light years again. And so this is a little bit closer to the representation of the galactic center. This is, you know, there's quite a lot of stars in the center. It's, it's a little bit more massive than just the black hole itself and this is where the sun starts orbiting around it. But once again, the speed here is only 23 kilometers per second. Well, that's that's not 200. That's not even close to being 200. And one galactic year here is 2 billion years. It's uh, not 200 million, it's, it's about 10 times longer than it should be. All right, so that's not working out so far. Let's maybe increase the mass again. So we know in total in, um, in our uh, Milky Way galaxy, there's somewhere around 100 billion or maybe 200 billion stars. Uh, and Sun is somewhere closer to the, the center here. So the actual galaxy would be around this big. Sun is right here. So maybe this part contains about 
I don't know, 50 billion stars? Around 50 billion. So um, let's just increase the mass of Sagittarius A once again, making it not 1 billion, but 50 billion um, suns, essentially. And that's 50 followed by nine zeros. And here we go. We're going to turn this into a very massive black hole. And we're going to go in here again and change the parameters so that we're actually orbiting it at 26,000 light years away. And I think this is uh, maybe a, a slightly more extreme representation of our galaxy. So here we have um, a central black hole with 50 billion um, masses of suns. And essentially this would be a representative of all of these other stars that might be pulling our sun toward the center. And if we go into motion once again, it's still not 200. It's only 164 kilometers per second, obviously a little bit closer to 200, and obviously the galactic year here, if you look under the orbital period, is about 300 million years, so it's about 100 million years longer. But uh, this is as extreme as I'm willing to go. I mean, you actually have to make this about 100 billion stars for the sun to actually have the velocity or the orbital speed or whatever you want to call this motion speed here uh, of what we actually detect. So we know that the actual speed is somewhere closer to about 200 kilometers per second. And so this would have to be essentially the mass of the entire galaxy for, for it to actually work. So only when I make Sagittarius a uh, approximately 100 billion masses of sun, which is essentially almost the entire mass of our galaxy, uh, that's when the, the velocity here becomes a little bit closer to reality at 230 kilometers per second, with one galactic year being um, around 200 million years, which is exactly what it actually is. But we know that there is, you know, there isn't really that many stars here. There isn't 100 billion stars. There, there isn't enough mass that we see that we detect to actually make this so massive. And this is where the idea of dark, dark matter comes in. So in order for our sun to move as fast as it's moving, you know, in, in order for it to have such a speed and such a galactic here, there has to be a lot of mass here hidden somewhere. And this is what we refer to as dark matter because we just can't see it. There's quite a lot of theories on um, what it might be. Some people think it's black holes. Some people think it's uh, invisible particles, invisible, really, really large particles that we can't really see and can't detect with anything. So that's why it's called dark matter. But some people think that maybe it's just various um, interesting things we haven't discovered yet. Like, for example, lots and lots of various um, gas or um, really, really dark planemos. So planets and stars that might not be visible. Uh, but it just wouldn't really still add up to, to such a very large mass that we, we see right here. And so what it all comes down to is that, uh, well, the only explanation that we came up with so far is that so... If Sagittarius A is its, you know, normal mass, which is, of course, 4.3 uh, million suns, and if the sun is orbiting at the speed that it's orbiting at, um, there has to be not only these other stars that we might be able to see here, and I'm going to add them just, just for you to kind of visualize this. And so here we go, a very, very simple representation of a galaxy with a black hole in the middle and stars orbiting around it, and our sun somewhere on the outskirts here. And so for all of this to actually occur and for all of this to actually make sense, so, you know, for the sun to move at 200 kilometers per second, for the sun to have a galactic year of um, 200 million years, and for all these other stars to have these parameters, including, of course, other galaxies, um, all of this has to have this invisible dark matter somewhere hiding here in between, or actually everywhere. We haven't really explained it very well just yet, and we haven't really detected it just yet, but we see the effects. The effects are there, and the only way to explain a high velocity of stars on the outskirts is to actually have this concept of dark matter. And that's really all we know about it. You basically know as much as the scientists, modern scientists today, because we haven't really explained it or discovered anything else about it. And that's essentially what I wanted to talk about in this video and kind of help you visualize uh, the idea of um, dark matter and how we actually know that it has to be somewhere out there. Otherwise, things don't make sense. And anyway, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you learned something from, from this video. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, this little simulation of a very really small but somewhat interesting galaxy 
the Milky Way. And hopefully you will subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with your friends, and possibly comment on uh, what else do you know or when, uh, what else do you think about Dark Matter? Is there something that I haven't mentioned that you want me to talk about? Please leave it in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye.